listening to the Author Inside You podcast, a weekly podcast designed to motivate you to finish writing a book, choose a publisher, and have your work build an audience. Keep listening if you're looking to get propelled into the next chapter of your life. And now, it's the Author Inside You podcast with your host, Leah and Matt Rafferty. Hello, and welcome to the Author Inside You podcast. I'm Matt Rafferty. And I'm Leah Rafferty. Today, our guest is Steve Adams. At the age of 61, Steve decided to hike the Appalachian Trail, which led to his podcast and his first two books. The books are called My Appalachian Trial One, Three Weddings and a Sabbatical, and the other book, My Appalachian Trial Two, Creaking Geezer Hidden Flagon. Welcome, Steve. Hi, how are you? Uh, We're doing great. So tell us what happened. How did you how did you uh, decide to hike the Appalachian Trail, and how did that turn into a book? <laughs> well, it turned into two books. Um, as you can tell, I'm not from America, and uh, I, um, I came over here in 2005. And I'd always wanted to. I'd always fancied the idea of this. I read the Bill Bryson book, A Walk in the Woods, back in oh, 1996. Yes. Yeah, I loved it. Oh, I he is very it. funny, very yeah. funny. Yeah, he's hilarious. And uh, it was one of those things that went on the bucket list, and I didn't, never thought I'd do it. Then, of course, I moved to America. Um, then I started an insurance agency down here in Florida. And by the, by the December 2013, I was then 61, and my wife and I decided to sell the agency so, so that I could hike the Appalachian Trail. Um, she said, you're getting old. I was clinically obese. I'd never hiked, never slept in a tent. And uh, so she said, if you're ever going to do it, this is the year. Wow, nice wife. Yeah, that's what I would yeah. say, too. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I so think I, your, I, your wife needs to talk to Leah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would, of course I'd be the same. Uh, well, it's one of those things that she, she always says, you've got to live your best life, and Yes. It was yeah. something I just wanted to do, do and I, would, I didn't want to do, do it in one go. So I prepared for it. I set up a website with, with a blog, which formed the basis of my book, um, and just put one foot in front of the other for five million times, which is the number <laughs> of steps it takes. And I ended up at the top of Mount Cotard in Maine and, um, in September uh, 2014. And then you took notes along the way to, with, with the idea of writing the book? Yeah, I actually took my iPad with me, which wasn't a smart move, um, because I'm, I was constantly protecting it. Uh, but eventually, it lasted okay. I actually sent it back when I was in New Hampshire. I kept a journal. I think called I think it's called Day One, a journal on the on the iOS store, the Apple store, and it allowed me to when I got into town to write these blog posts. And you suddenly realise you've got a there's this kind of burden of expectation upon you. Because people start reading your blog posts and start commenting, and you feel this obligation to write them. Huh. I remember one of my one of my posts was about three and a half or four thousand words, wow. and so it formed a real crux the crux of my book. And when I got back, I had a full load of notes, and I think I think I basked in the glory for about three months. Then <laughs> uh, I started writing in uh, January two thousand and fifteen. Oh, and your book so that was a pretty good pretty quick. Writing of your book, then? Uh, no, I started writing, but I didn't get it. I didn't publish it until May two thousand and sixteen. Well, I did write one hundred and fifty thousand words, and uh, which is a lot. But I could have written three hundred three hundred and fifty thousand. <laughs> so much happened to me, um, but I, I had to cut it back. And then I learned this strange concept of American English from oh. my editor, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and she convinced me that that was the right way to go. So I, I, I accepted that, and there was four months editing, uh, editing while I was learning how to publish a book, because I, I made the conscious decision not to go for it to a publisher. When I saw the figures of how much you can earn self-publishing compared to getting yourself published, it made, made no sense at all to do anything other than self-publish. Oh, okay. And that's cool. exactly what I did. I went on YouTube, I work, worked out exactly how to do it, and... Um, you know, I then published it, and, and I love the result. You know, the 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 hard cut or the black the 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 paperback books look fantastic, and yeah. and I and I and I went on to uh, Ninety Nine Designs to get myself a cover, and they produced two fabulous covers. I thought, yes, and, you know, very and, nice. So and they went down really well. 
And then you found an editor. How did you find an editor? Well, I, I was part of a networking group and uh, and also part of a, an Appalachian Trail Club um, in Florida. And these guys, one of the guys in the club said to me that he knew an editor because she had edited his book. Uh, and um, she re he referred me to her and she and I got on great. Um, she gave me a hard time all the time, which was great. Uh, Brit Brits like all that sort of thing. And she just kept giving me revisions to do, and I made revisions, and I understood what she was saying. And it's funny, uh, the editing process was was an intellectual challenge for me, far greater than I thought it would be. I thought I could read it. I knew I could speak English, and I could articulate it reasonably well. So I felt that it would my writing was okay. Um, but I was writing in far too long sentences. Oh. And also my grammar wasn't correct in a number of cases, which I regretted. But, you know, it's one of those things you learn. And uh, I came up with something I was pretty darn pleased with. Yes, it's a wonderful book. But, but it, it took four mm -hmm. months to edit it. That's what you said before, four months? Uh, I think I met her maybe nearly five months, actually. It was five months, yeah, five months. Because it kept going backwards and forwards, and I was very diligent in going through everything. And she would say to me, for example, when, you, when, when you're hiking, you, you, you go up a mountain and you see these fabulous views. I ran out of superlatives by Tennessee, <laughs> which is only the, only the third state. And I actually put a blog post up called Beautiful, Wonderful, Splendid, Magnificent, something like that. And I was, and I was apologizing for running out of words. I just had run out of superlatives. Hmm. And so she said to me that I used the word spectacular, I think 23 times, something like that. And uh, she was right. Uh -huh. <laughs> how, she, how she knew I'd use it 23 times, I just could not tell you. But so I would then go through and I'd keep some of them and change some of them. I'd get one, you know, I just work out ways to make it read better. And I must confess that when I looked at what I did originally and then I read what I finished with, I was I was really pleased with how she how she'd done it. So she was worth every penny. Great. Well, that's good to know, because I think sometimes um, some people might be a little afraid because they don't have the money or whatever about editors. But it really does make a difference to hire somebody who has a professional eye. Oh yeah, she was she was red hot as well. She really knew her stuff. And as a I guess as a contrast, when I when I'd got the two books going and I started selling them, and they were selling reasonably well, I um, started researching how to market these things. And I decided from information I was seeing that I should write a third book, which I should then offer for free to attract people to my mailing list, which I would then grow, which I now have grown. Not huge it's 200 so far um because i haven't really worked too hard on it but i give away a free book which i wrote about fifteen thousand words i wrote it in a couple of weeks okay. um because what i did i, I did a, I did a, a presentation to the appalachian trial club of florida and i parlayed that into a, a book yeah, oh, okay. And I called it hiking the Appalachian Trail is easy, especially if you've never hiked, <laughs> if you, especially if you've never hiked before. And, uh, and and that went really well. I mean, and now, funnily enough, I tell everybody it's free, but about 150 of them have been bought on Amazon for two dollars ninety nine as well. So. Great. Oh, great, congratulations! You wrote, you set out to write one book. It turned into two books, which turned into three books. But the two yeah. books, the two books were physically published on the same day in may is that right you released yes, two were. books two books on the same day and That's, so yes, is is it a sequel is it no so what happened was i when i i knew i was writing tons of words and i thought to myself it, that there was a natural break because um after about 700 miles i got bitten by a dog and i contracted a, um, a bacterial infection of the skin called cellulitis and it, which is very dangerous it, and if it gets to your bloodstream you can die oh. and so I, I decided to come home for about seven days uh, my wife suggested I should get a one-way ticket yeah. but I got, a, I, got a, I got a return ticket um, much to her dismay mm -hmm. and uh, and I headed it back about seven or eight days later so that was a natural break for the book and I thought well I like the idea of the two titles, uh, the fact that you can offer a series of something mm -hmm. encourages people to get stuck into the first one and then they may want to read the second one as well. Yes, Great. good idea. That is. So then, um, and they were, I take it they're both uh, published by the same publishing company. Well, the, no, the publishing company, 
the published they're self-published so they right. the, so the, I guess it's through I, create space yeah right. it goes it goes onto the kindle uh, onto kindle then it goes onto create space and then i put it on kindle select which allows people who've got kindle prime membership to get it for free but as an author you get point zero something zero pennies <laughs> but, I, but, I, but i've had on top of my sales i've had over three hundred thousand page reads wow that's the equivalent of over a thousand books sold so wow wonderful wow. yeah and then, and then is it also offered in bookstores nope nope never even thought of that it wasn't even bothered about that i i, I my sales are going fine uh, i earn some money I, I i think part part of this process was um for me to get a lot of thoughts and guilt out of my head from um, a, <laughs> a dissolute life, I guess. And, and uh, you know, one, one thing that happens when you're in the woods, you, you allow yourself to think about stuff and you think about your life and th where you've gone wrong and where you've gone right. And, um, and I enjoyed that part of it. And so writing that down was terribly cathartic at the end. Well, it's you just have... Uh energy that I think our listeners would like to you should read the book or get into the podcast because um, Matt is a big fan and he has um, had me listen and he's talking about the, the book and it is you are very um, humorous obviously and um, it's so interesting to hear what does go on on the trail because you know the average person doesn't know but no they really don't right. they really don't and how hard it is yeah, it was hard. It was hard, but it's. I, I strongly say, and I said this in the beginning of my third book, that if you can walk two hundred yards without requiring oxygen uh, <laughs> for about three or four days afterwards, then you're you can walk the Appalachian Trail. You're going to burn like heck when you start. Your the lactic mus lactic acid in your muscles will kill you. I'd stop every fifteen or twenty yards to gasp for breath. But after about 200 miles, I was okay. So. <laughs> 200 yeah. miles. The first 200 are the hardest, right? Exactly, yeah. The rest of it was fine. <laughs> so then at, at the end of your podcast, uh, you read a chapter of your book, of your audio book. So are you self-publishing your audio book also? Do you know what? I'm, I'm slightly conflicted about that because I love the idea. I really love the idea that my, my audience listens to my uh, audio book at the end and they really really do seem to enjoy that and I think it might be a, a touch churlish to be selling it but um, you know <laughs> it may seem silly not to I've got the audio done on the first book I haven't done it on the second book yet but I've got because of the podcast I, the way I've set myself up I know how to record now mm -hmm. and I know how to make it sound fine and I'm probably going to do that. And then at some stage I will put it together. But, you know, you know what it's like. You're doing a podcast and you're trying to write. And I'm trying to do a, um, interestingly, I'm trying to do a, a course on how to make a, a podcast. Oh. And all that, all those, all those uh, that agglomeration of things, you've just got tons going on all the time. And I find it difficult to concentrate on doing the audio book when I know I really should. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think there's there's a market out there for your audio book because not everybody will have heard of your will have heard of your podcast. And yeah, so, you're right, you're right. And then there's people who might not want to read but will listen in the car as they travel. Yeah, I think I think uh, um, audio on demand and a podcast is an example of this, but so is an audio book is absolutely the way of the future. I, I'm entirely convinced that radio is is going to be struggling soon mm -hmm. because, because people can get into their car and with their bluetooth they can turn on their what was their radio can turn on their podcast right and i th i really i really love the i love the whole concept of this which is what attracted to me it to me in the first place well i think it's interesting too because when the author reads the book it's just um you feel like even you know the person even more you know like if or you feel like you're more immersed into this situation and it's interesting i totally agree and, and in fact I've, people have said that the fact that i sound english yes uh, uh kind of kind of helps for american audience and majority yeah. of my podcast because i know the statistics from libsyn i know that the majority of my audience is from america huh interesting interesting hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think for some reason you're right that Americans love, you know, your accent and, you know, it's interesting. Right. 
it, it, never, it, it, never, it never worked this well in the UK, let me tell yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody was excited to hear you talk. <laughs> so, so what are you doing to uh, market your podcast and, and, the, and the books? Well, the books, I... What did I do? I, I just... I kind of use Facebook. When, when, when I, I, I've listened to all these um, various courses you can learn on how to market. I found one I really really like the mark dawson course and i uh, in terms of writing and he's he's a whiz for facebook uh, advertising and i haven't done facebook advertising i did a lot of facebook where i found appalachian trail um appalachian trail uh, groups and i would then post on there or join the group and then post on the, the, the pictures of my book and then when my books started selling more and they got to number at one stage number one and number two in the camping section on the kindle store wow. paid books. yeah which is cool yes. um yeah i and frankly it's such a small niche it isn't that impressive frankly <laughs> but well, it, it impressed the, it impressed the crap out of me i'll tell you yes yeah <laughs> right well and if you so, hadn't if you hadn't told us it was a small niche we, we, would have known. Ne- we would never have known. <laughs> I did mention it in the, when I put it on Facebook either, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so I just posted the, the, the screenshot of that, and, and that starts um, sales. And, and I have found that every time I post something, anything at all in Facebook, I get a little jump in sales every day, every great. time I do it. Yeah, wow. it's great. Very good. Well, that's good for our listeners to know also. Facebook so works. <laughs> it, 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 it totally does. It's just a fantastic medium. And, and I think, as I say, a podcast is more, because you said about selling the audio book, frankly, the podcast is an extension of the book. And I, I do mention my book. I'm not trying to sell it on, on, the, uh, on the podcast, but because I mention it and people know it's there and in the show notes, I sometimes put a link in the show notes. They can go there if they want to. But many of them just say they want to or they'll write to me, say they're listening to the podcast, having read the books, or they say they find the books having listened to the podcast. So it's all part of marketing, I'm sure. Yeah, I think so, because Matt prefers to listen where I would rather read. So then Matt would say, oh, I found this great podcast. Oh, you have to read his book. And then, you, you know what I'm saying? So, yes, I yeah. think it could go that you get your um, – listening audience excited and then they'll have someone who maybe like i said reads instead and then they'll purchase this book for them so it's a good idea i think especially and it's cheap and it's cheap and that's yeah. the, you know yeah. and, and the math makes so much sense i spoke to another author on my show recently and he didn't tell me he didn't tell me this and i won't say who it is but he because he signed up with a publisher when they put his book on kindle it was about fourteen dollars ninety nine of which he got about three dollars Oh. Now, I, I self-published on Kindle. I sold mine originally for $4.99 each, which is, say, 5 bucks. I get $3.50. Wow. <laughs> wow. You get, 70, you get 70% on Kindle. Kind of, why wouldn't you do that? Right, I, right. And I have complete control of it. I set it up as I want to set it up. Nobody tells me how to do it. I am my own business. So Entrepreneur, yeah. right? Right. Well, kind of, kind of, yeah. yeah. I, I got to be 61 before I was an entrepreneur. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> but then nearly everyone has access to Amazon, too. So it's just... Absolutely. Uh, right. And what about, I noticed um, that you um, spoke at a library. So are you going out um, doing speeches? To, was yeah, that- I, yeah, I... I <laughs> this is it's not necessarily a good thing. I don't lack oh. for confidence. And unfortunately, though, it's, it's, it's only... I don't think I'm a great speaker at, at, at it. I'm getting better, and I've just announced, funnily enough, on my podcast, and I, I mentioned it, I only recorded it this afternoon, and the podcast goes out Thursday, the next episode. Uh, I said that I'm giving speeches locally in Sarasota, one in Sarasota, and one where I live near Parrish in Florida, and, and I've said I'm going to try to Facebook Live it. Oh, well, now, good luck. I have no yeah. idea. I have no idea if that's a good idea. I may, <laughs> I may totally mess it up, but, you know, why not try it? Well, another adventure. That's right. wonderful. You, you may know the next day, right? I will probably know. I'll get abuse from all my, all my British friends, no doubt. <laughs> once, yeah. once they wake up and see it the next day. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations. It just sounds, first off, congratulations on accomplishing the walk. The, the walk. AC. But now that's another thing. So um, Matt was telling me um, the pronunciation of... Right. So I say Appalachian Trail because that's just how, you know, we said it when I grew up in New Jersey. But um, I believe in your first podcast, you, you explained why you say 
that word differently. I, I, I used to say Appalachian Trail. It, it naturally comes to me, and I always thought of it as um, Appalachian Trail. But I was down south, and trust me, south of the nice Mason-Dixon line, there is an entirely, entirely different country. Oh. And, and, and when you cross the Mason-Dixon line, you don't hear, hear country music anymore either. <laughs> That's kind, of, huh? kind of weird. And uh, one guy said to me in a restaurant once, uh, in a uh, not restaurant, in a convenience store, he said, um, I, I was talking about Appalachian, he said, just so you know, it's actually the Appalachian Trail. Hmm. So, oh, really, is it? And he was so convinced of it that, of course, I was in the South. So, uh, out of deference to him, I thought I started calling it Appalachian. And I just can't stop calling it Appalachian Trail anymore. So, you know, it is, you know, I changed my, I changed my speaking because of what this guy said, said to me. Mm -hmm. So, when, when you would go into towns along the trail when you were hiking, uh, what did people call it when you stopped at restaurants or hostels or convenience stores? Oh, all 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 across the south, it's the Appalachian Trail, so and all uh, and all across the north, it's the Appalachian Trail. Mm, so once you get to Pennsylvania, the name of the trail changes, huh? <laughs> it, yeah, we actually, yeah we called Pennsylvania Rocksylvania because there was tons and tons <laughs> of rocks which smash you up. Oh, oh. They were they were a nightmare. Oh, I fell so many times as well. Well, thank well, you yes. so much. I mean, this... Steve, it's great talking to you. I feel like I could talk to you for another two hours, but I think Leah will say that's enough. Two more questions for you. How can our podcast listeners get in touch with you? And what's the best advice you can give writers? Okay. Um, my email address is steve at steveadams.info, I-N-F-O. And if they're interested in the podcast, it's steve at Mighty Blue on the A-T dot com and um that's that's obviously the website as well advice uh having never been published it's difficult for me to say to, to really know how good or bad being published is i can tell you as a self-published author the satisfaction of putting your own book together doing the margins putting the pictures in I actually wrote it on a software called Scrivener, which I absolutely love, by the way. Get Scrivener is very much a piece of advice. But write it yourself and work out how to self-publish because everything is going the way of the individual to do these things ourselves. And so I, I, I genuinely believe the publishing companies are up against it because these, uh, these self-published authors are selling books in the millions. Wow. This self-publishing is not going away because people are in control of their own business. And I love that part of it. I think it's well, it's very attractive. Yeah, the people we talked to um, who have self-published, they all said that, that I like to be in control of my own life. And this I want to determine, you know, why, like you said, they get a big cut, you know, and all that. So it's very interesting. Right. If you're going to you pour know, your heart and soul into writing a book, you should have a lot of control over it. Absolutely. And, and interestingly, uh, being interviewed on this show, for example, is a great idea because uh, from the point of view, the authors go on book tours. I'm going to go on a podcast tour. I'm definitely going to do that. And I, I was actually I was actually had a podcast uh, meeting tonight. And the guy was saying, this is the way authors are currently doing it. So your show is absolutely at the right time as well. Oh, good. Well, because people are, people are going to want to be on these book shows because they, they're going to reach an audience. You're going to have an audience. I, you, when you first start, you probably won't have much of an audience. Yeah. But when you get started and people like what you do, then you, you will be giving you, – you're going to be the bookshop where instead of going to sign the books, I can sit here in my pajamas and a T-shirt and, uh, and uh, speak to somebody and um, reach an audience that I wouldn't otherwise have been able to reach. Mm, very interesting, right. yeah. Well, that good. Is. I hope that comes true. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. I hope we do get yeah. some more listeners. Yeah. yeah. So, but. Right. Well, thank you, Steve, for joining us today. And no, I'll put all your contact information in our show notes. And until next time, right on. Thank you for listening to the Author Inside You podcast with your host, Leah and Matt Rafferty. 